Hey everyone, it's David here, and I want to cover pirate metrics and how you can tie a kind of an existing product framework that we all know and love into your funding so you can incrementally invest in innovation. So you're probably already familiar with pirate metrics. I'll cover it really briefly for you, but the reason it's called pirate metrics is uh, A, A, R, 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 <laughs> R, acquisition, activation, retention, referral revenue. I prefer to draw it this way rather than a funnel, which I picked up from Ash Maria because I feel like it really act more accurately represents it as a system. And, and most of your products and services today need to be represented as a system because they are really complex. It's not you just pour more things at the top and more money comes out the bottom. And so um, what I also like about this version is the qualitative stuff. So for example, from Brand Cooper, aware, hopeful, satisfied, passionate. How are your customers becoming aware of your new product and service? Are they becoming hopeful, this aha moment that the value prop really resonates with them? Are they coming back because they're satisfied? And then uh, are they becoming passionate and evangelizing your product and service to other people, which saves you on acquisition? So with that in mind, I want to talk about how this kind of applies to funding and how you can anchor your experimentations against this framework. So for example, if you are acquiring a lot of customers, so people are coming in, but they're churning out over here in activation. So that means they're not necessarily signing up, they're not creating a profile, they're not taking a picture and sharing it. Like the core um, offering of, your of the value prop of your product isn't happening. Then it doesn't make any sense to spend and spend and spend over here, okay? Um, because it's like pouring water into a, a leaky bucket. You're just churning everyone out. So your flow here, you know, don't pump more people into here when they're just kind of churning out over here. So when you experiment, you want to kind of focus your experiments here. You know, is there something that's maybe disconnected where if people click and they come over that the value proposition they're seeing is different than what they see to come in through your ads, through your marketing material, through your social media. If there's a big disconnect here, then people will convert maybe high over here. So maybe you'll get something like a 3% click through rate, but over here you'll get like a 0% conversion rate on your page or on your app and on your product. So be mindful of those changes. And so you want to basically be able to anchor your experimentation on the activation aspect rather than keep pushing more people in through through acquisition. And early on, even if you have, you know, 100 uniques a day, that should be enough for you to start understanding, hey, if I change something here in my value proposition, does it have a meaningful impact? Less than 100 a day coming to your new product or service uh, it's really tough to statistically make any kind of changes and feel like it, it really made a difference because it's so spiky. And if you can't get 100 a day consistently, it's really difficult to do. Next, once you figure out activation, then you have to figure out, okay, well, what are we doing here with retention, especially if people are leaving and they're not coming back, okay? And maybe they're leaving just because it feels like, well, it's, it's interesting. I tried it once but it wasn't interesting enough for me to come back and use it time and time again. So this is kind of the core of your product. And so you have to get this right or all the marketing in the world isn't going to help you. So this idea of can we focus our experimentation here and just keep activation stable, but really try to figure out what is it about retention that needs to be fixed so this becomes a habit and people come back in a good way and people come back and use it and then are they becoming satisfied and you can do some really interesting tests here like sean ellis test where uh you can ask how disappointed would they be if this went away obviously if they're not disappointed at all you have a problem <laughs> but that does open up an opportunity for you to ask more questions and well why weren't you disappointed like what is it lacking and it's not a long list of features. You don't necessarily want to create a feature list, but you want to get to the jobs they're trying to do behind those features. And that's your job as a product designer and a product manager or an entrepreneur, to be fair, is to find out how to design something eloquently that can solve for those. So you need to figure that out before you worry about scaling. Okay. And then we talk about, uh, you figure that out, then it becomes, okay, so what do we do here with referrals? How do we get people more passionate? You want them to convert from satisfied to passionate because if you bring in more customers this way, this adds to your overall kind of flow and it saves you money because people are organically 
um, referring people in. So you really want to figure that out. So here you might do things like you might, you might have some ref codes, right? Uh, you might work on word of mouth, how you can kind of um, reduce friction because you want to reduce friction in this kind of gap of how people refer other people. You want them to do that quickly once they become satisfied. And it's something over time. It doesn't mean they instantly become passionate. They usually don't. It's usually, um, they, it's a progression over time. So what's really interesting is how, once we anchor our experimentation on that, it can also impact our funding. So early on, let's say you're doing uh, seed level funding and seed level funding is, you know, let's say 50K plus. So it's, it's you know, in a corporation that's going to be a little bigger for a startup, you might even do that for a little less. You want to focus on your acquisition and activation metrics for seed level. So you want to know, like, what are my click through rates? What's my... Um, cost here, cost per acquisition, you know, what what are these ways is really testing acquisition channels to get to the right customer. And then are they becoming active in this new product or service we built? And so that much money should help you figure that out because you are going to have to spend on acquisition probably at least a little bit at the beginning. And you're going to have to spend money you know, kind of tweaking that core of, okay, did people do that first thing that we want them to do in the experience? Okay. But what's really interesting next is when, you, when you're more in launch kind of uh, phase of funding, that can be anywhere from um, 100K or more, you know, spending time trying to fix this loop of retention and activation. So you want to focus on activation still, but you also want to focus on retention. So you want to have really good metrics there to understand, are people coming in? What's daily active use, weekly active use, monthly active use? You know, can we focus on that when we're in our funding round? Because we want to figure this out before we scale, okay, and before we grow. And then when you're looking at growth, think of that as another funding round. And this can get expensive because you're trying to scale. So this might be even 500k plus for you. But for this, you want to you want to uh, focus on referral and revenue because you don't want to necessarily prematurely grow something without having a solid revenue model. So, so the, this is really, really going to have to figure out your business model uh, if you have an earlier, you know, uh, your cost structure, your revenue and your referral. You know, is this a meaningful kind of way to increase the the amount of people that come in? Are there other ways where you can focus your experimentation there? So this is a, a little more advanced, I, I guess you could say, application of pirate metrics in the sense of when you're kind of launching something new, you want to figure out acquisition and activation first, and that shouldn't take a lot of money. And then you want to figure out uh, activation and retention. Okay. And that'll take a little more money. And then when you want to grow it and scale it, that's going to cost more, but you've kind of already figured out some of the previous parts and you're not necessarily trying to scale something where you're churning out people earlier on. So if you want to look at these of like stages, you know, your seed stage, you have essentially, you've identified the opportunity and you've approved it and you're working through problem solution fit and you're kind of measuring this stuff. With launch, again, you're, you're testing your MVPs in the market and you're looking for more of that fit and your, your funding's a little more, but you're, you're testing kind of the core of the thing. And then growth, that's when you're worried, worried about scaling. You don't prematurely jump there, but you're looking at retention of revenue KPIs. Or do you have kind of this viral coefficient where for every one customer that comes in, right, they refer 1.3 or whatever that number is, works out for you where, hey, we actually have an engine, an engine of growth here. So I just wanted to cover that for you today. Um, if you have any more questions, that's my contact, david at precool.com. And thanks for attending.